It's Checkpoint on ENCA and ETV. I'm in Gepile Mabuse. This week, cold-blooded murders in the security industry. No chava katitima. Tere ola tom. Tom. Ono zeme ola tom. Tom neo igwa ora eta ugwa no ora. Shot dead and dumped in the middle of a pay dispute. Udwa butoko. Butoko fa lagi ngwana katela ngwana ka abu lewe biya nakam. I love it. But their boss says he saw and knows nothing. What happened on the day where your security officers died? I was not there. Find out more after this. South Africa's security industry is worth an estimated 45 billion rand and employs more than half a million guards registered with the Private Security Industry Regulatory Authority. But in the last five years, the regulator has deregistered nearly 4,000 companies for non-compliance. Checkpoint producer Tsehova Tsomakulejo investigates mysterious deaths involving two security companies. Ashley Market and Sabadlamini were behind the camera. In the small village of Hamasemola, Limpopo, police visibility seems to be the norm. No one in this tight-knit community ever imagined that one day some among them would die at the hands of security personnel. On July 3rd, this man who's asked us to conceal his identity left his home in the early hours of the morning to be first in line to withdraw his social grant. He's schizophrenic and receives a disability grant of 1,860. The money is deposited into his Sasa card, which he can use at any ATM to withdraw cash. The nearest and only money machine in the area is inside Big Boy Filling Station. Each and every month, take a quick fee, a retroamo, kire, ya garage, a ro, tagal line, ya or rohono, a gratchel, devosas. Ran a line, eva eat a lil, yohono feja, lebosas, in a eat a lil. At Big Boy, he met others, also burning the midnight oil, waiting for the filling station to open its gates at 6 a.m. It was a freezing winter morning, so the men lit a fire. Soon thereafter, they heard a startling noise. Why the one are Tom? I need the one are Tom. The shots are more, more, more long. The level. The gunshots were being fired by guards working for Lindani Protection Services, employed to secure the premises of fuel retailer Global Oil, renting space at the filling station. Every time I go to my aunt's house, I get a kiki kiki. Can I get a hug? About 18 shots were fired, says the eyewitness. Unless again, Mara, what tempera gidi or what for what la or what to a larusuri do doubting? I sang a ritual larusuri, even if you also need any sabola or the level and a wooden never naval. When police arrived, two bodies lay on the ground. 37 year old Richard Nchabeleng and 63 year old Jonathan Rakhasa had succumbed to multiple gunshot wounds and were declared dead at the scene. Emily Rakasa has no clue why her husband of nearly 20 years had to die such a gruesome death. Ntuya wona ba yang go sha bohloko ga go ke taba gore ba di a dithunya ba di bia mo pele ga bona tseo ka re go batho ba ebele ditsotsi ba tlolwa le bona. Jwa le mo lele gore motho ga tsebe le ka sithunya ene le ka mlapeng sang ka go ba le sithunya. 
the local EFF mobilized activists to confront Global Oil the very next day. Global Oil has over 99 retail sites across all nine provinces. The company gave the families 15,000 rand each to cover funeral costs and allegedly promised more support. She says she cannot afford a legal battle with the fuel giant. Next, a global oil legal representative struggles to explain the conduct of the company's security officers. Whether or not uh, we are aware of who had what at what stage uh, of the incident, that goes to these details that I am saying that we are unable to share with you. On July 10th, the Hamasemola police in Limpopo arrested two security officers working for Lindani Protection Services. They appeared in court and were granted bail of 1,000 rand each. The eyewitness, a diagnosed schizophrenic, says he'll be unable to turn state witness because of his condition. He says the trauma from the shooting has exacerbated his mental illness. He too wants compensation from Global Oil. He's kept the clothes he had on that night as evidence, should the need arise. One of the men who died that night, Richard Nchabileng, was a well-known radio personality and station manager at local community station Mascom FM. Lindani Protection Services declined to be interviewed. Global Oil agreed to speak through its lawyer. He insists the guards charged with murder are well trained. So why did they not fire warning shots instead of opening fire on unarmed civilians? Uh, as to specifics and finer details like warning shots and, and so forth, we are unable to confirm or to comment on those uh, because we really would it? not want uh, to hinder uh, or compromise or jeopardize investigations which are really underway. We must not just shoot to harm or shoot to kill a person. We must make sure that the amount of force that you are utilizing is equivalent to the amount of danger that you are faced with. We asked Lahodi whether Global Oil was aware that people queue outside the filling station in the early hours of the morning to withdraw their social grants. Yes, we would be aware uh, of that. But the other thing that you need to take uh, note of is that we are also aware of the threat that is posed to our side. Uh, in fact, speaking of threats, I, I should also inform you, we've had, I think it's about four incidences of robbery on that side in the past two years alone. Was there any threat that was posed by these men who were queuing outside the filling station? Our information is that uh, our guards uh, were called over uh, to the site uh, to attend to some suspicious uh, activity and uh, that unfortunately uh, the incident uh, that you are here regarding then unfolded. But if you are saying that there was a security threat, 
then that was informed by some activity by these men who were queuing outside. So I'm asking you, what were they doing that was a threat to your company? Now, I am saying to you that the people that responded there are experts in the field of security. And these people, in their response, in their wisdom, in their choices, they will have to answer uh, these sort of questions uh, to the law. Why were firearms allegedly planted near the deceased bodies, we asked? Whether or not uh, we are aware of who had what, at what stage uh, of the incident, that goes to these details that I am saying that we are unable to share with you. Back in July, Global Oil gave each family 15,000 rand towards burials. Lekhodi says this was just an act of kindness and not in any shape or form admission of guilt. The fact of the matter is that uh, in a private arrangement between us and the families, we saw a need and uh, we saw fit to make the donation, which we did. Is it because the families were accusing Global Oil Company of this incident that occurred. It is news to us to hear from you that the families uh, are holding uh, Global uh, blameworthy. Global Oil also denies having made promises to assist the two families on an ongoing basis. The outcome that we attained out of the meeting was that uh, we were now going to go back uh, to the security company that we had employed and discuss these issues that were raised by the family and then come back to the family once uh, there is a determination that we would so have collected. So have you done so? No, we haven't Why yet. Why not? Because uh, we don't have an outcome yet uh, to announce to the families. I think you need to do better. You really have to do better. If you are so interested in the well-being of the community that you operate in, you need to do better. We will either withdraw and or suspend the company. Coming up, another security company in hot water over the deaths of its own guards. But the allegation is that they were there to confront you no. about non-payment of their salaries. Why didn't you pay them? The pressure to provide for his newborn baby propelled Ufenza Munaledi to take a job as a security officer with FBI Secret Service and Agency in Hammanskral, work he was not trained to do. On April 1st, Munaledi left home for work where he guards the premises of Amawakawaka projects north of the capital Pretoria. Little did his mother know that it would be the last time she would see her firstborn son alive. The phone call was from Munaledi's workplace. FBI Secret Service and Agency is owned by Tabo Shangwani. Munaledi says Shangwani paid them little attention when he eventually arrived. While at the premises, Munaledi made a disturbing discovery. Munaledi 
a rota madi a le a tsamaya a jampa skontiri a ya go spurung she called the police and a hunt for her son was immediately launched police followed the visible blood stains which led them to a gruesome scene the body of a 25 year old male later identified as bongani konong lay in the open felt Kunong was also an employee of FBI Secret Service and Agency. His mother, Gladys Kunong, says she was expecting her son, who she depends on financially, to return on the 2nd of April with groceries. Instead, police arrived on her doorstep. <laughs> Unlike Kunong, Munaledi's son's whereabouts remained an unsolved mystery. Police continued their search. Days passed and there was still no sign or sight of him. On the 6th of April, Munaledi requested residents of Hamanskral to form a search party. Private buckies and vehicles left for Bonacord, where the first body was found. After minutes of searching in this felt, a pungent odour led the search party to what would become Mona Lady's worst nightmare. From Greyle, 10 meters away from Bongan. Yena, often to a mupi pile camabiae, as I would not have. A tunse, this side, Kukamul, exciting in carpool, we are to lag up. About tunsu a mum rum, what bed at a la mupi. Mona Lady says her son was promised weekly wages. But six weeks after being hired by FBI Secret Service and agency, he had not been paid a cent. Munaledi had apparently grown tired of being sent from pillar to post when inquiring about what he was owed. It's believed he confronted his supervisor, Stephen Songwani, and boss, Tawa Songwani, on the night he died. <laughs> A week later, a third body, believed to be of another employee of FBI Secret Service and Agency, was found in the Bonacord area in an advanced stage of decomposition. It was unidentifiable. Post-mortem results are still outstanding. Kunong's father, Dan Sibanyoni, says there's no doubt in his mind that his child was killed for questioning his non-payment. He says Songwani promised to assist the family to bury their son, Bongani, but never did. Munaledi admits her son did not hold a CIRA approved security certificate. She says his desperation for an income forced him to take a job he was not qualified to do. I was not training a security. I was not training a security. Kunong blames the security company for hiring her son despite him not having a gun license. Nse abe regi saba na bare na aba fadi tunya ba sne di license sa di tunya. Modi picture nse abo ngana bare uniform utar di tunya se pedi. It's obligatory by law for private security companies and their employees to be registered with CIRA. As the regulator of the industry. We did our own investigations, we went to the site, and um, it transpired that um, some of the people were not registered. According to Sira, although Bongani Kunong had this security certificate, it was not linked to FBI Secret Service and Agency. When I'm saying linked, I mean, if you are a security officer, you must be linked to the company that you are working for. So what some companies, unscrupulous companies do, they take security officers that are indeed registered and employ them within their company and not link those individuals with us as CIRA. One of the reasons why they do that is they don't want to pay CIRA the rates that they are supposed to pay CIRA. They don't want to pay um, annual fees to CIRA that they are supposed to be paying. 
because um, you pay annual fees in terms of the line with the number of employees that you are having. Secondly, they are defaulting stars uh, because they, if they don't link that person, they, they when they do their returns at SARS, they won't account for that person for those people because those people are not connected to their company. Three, they are also defaulting the Department of Labor because they are not being F. Sira has served the director of FBI Secret Service and Agency and his company with a notice of intention to suspend them. On May 18th, the police arrested FBI Secret Service and Agency Supervisor Stephen Tlangwani for the murders of Monaledi, Kunong and the third person believed to have been in the company's employ. We confronted Tabo Tlangwani. We found him at a shabin he renders services to in Pretoria. He'd initially promised us a sit-down interview, but gave us the runaround. He denied involvement in the murders of Monaledi and Kunong. Would you like to explain what happened on the day where your security officers died? I was not there. You were not there. Thank you. But what happened to them? But, but what happened to them? How did they die? They were on duty. I don't How did know. they die? I don't know. But it is I your company, know. is it not? Yes, it's mine. So how do you not know? How can you not explain what happened? There. So you were not there. Yeah. But the allegation is that they were there to confront you no. about non-payment of their salaries. Why didn't you pay them? Why didn't you pay them, Mr. Tlongwani? Mr. Tlongwani, the allegation is that they were there to confront you about the non-payment. You need to answer to our allegations, Mr. Tlongwani. One would expect those working in such a specialized and risky industry to act responsibly. We, as citizens, should be concerned. Thanks for watching Checkpoint. I'm Ngebili Mawise. Thank you.